What is remote development and how do you do it? Hi, I'm Eden. And I'm Josiah. And I'm Verdi. And welcome to ML Max TV. So ML Max provides a very opinionated view for data scientists and ML engineers to provide a guide of how to take custom machine learning solutions into production. In this episode, Verdi is going to be talking to us about using SSM or Systems Manager to SSH into a private EC2 instance. So Verdi, can you show us what your development setup looks like? Sure, Josiah and Eden, thank you. So I'm showing you my a blank IDE. So what I'll do is that I will connect to a EC2 instance. This is a private to EC2 instance because it's located in a, a private uh, subnet. Uh, without inbound and outbound internet connection. So as you can see, I managed to successfully connect. So I can open a folder here. And this is folder located on my uh, EC2 instance. You can tell from here, there's a home EC2 user here. So I can open uh, any uh, project directory here. And this all open on the EC2 instance. So I can just do my editing as usual. Like for example, uh, maybe I want to just show this file. And I can open the terminal here to start running it. Uh, on my test EC2 instance, I don't have all the packages in, like the linter install, so I'm just gonna ignore this one, right? And there's a few more tests that you can do. Like for example, I can query the instance metadata, and you can see that it show me well. This is my instance ID, right? And then I can actually go to run a sample uh, SQLint script to do some uh, unsupervised clustering, right? And all this again will run on the uh, remote EC2 instance, right? So, for example, for this one, and this is how it looks like. So again, everything stay on your EC2 instance. You you edit your files, you do a debugging, and you run everything done on EC2 instance. Great, sounds good. So, so what's some of the benefits of doing this remote development versus doing local development? Right, thanks, Eden, for asking this. So, uh, I like to highlight two. The first one is the ability to scale up and scale down resources. So when I start a project, I'll probably start with a T2 or T3 instances, right? I do some testing, interactive debugging to fix some bugs or uh, breakages in my, uh, my, my scripts. And then when I need to test with a real large data set, then I can uh, upsize my instance to maybe C5 or M5, or even if I need GPU, I'll upsize to a GPU instance, right? And then when it comes time, I need to do a development that doesn't need all those heavy weight resources, then I can scale down to T2 or T3 instances again. So that's the uh, uh, point number one. The point number two is that uh, remember that all your assets, all your artifacts are uh, contained on your AWS account. So they all stay on your EC2 instance or just on your F3 or the code commit. So there's uh, some uh, increase in the security aspect also. Great. Oh, sounds compelling. So could you give us an overview of the architecture for this setup? Sure. Let me show you. Start from flashing up the architecture diagram. So in terms of the AWS architecture diagram, this is how it looks like. Uh, uh, I think it's important to pay attention from, I would like to start from the right hand side. This is where you see your client. Your client is can be your corporate notebook or your corporate workstation. right? And then on the left hand side, we see that the EC2 instance is in the private subnet right and here we further can lock down the ec2 instance to not have the inbound and outbound uh, connectivity to the public internet right so when we want to do ssh from my corporate workstation what it does is that uh, i will authenticate through AWS system manager right so called the ssm uh, endpoints and then i need to use my AWS credential here right so my organization will need to give me with the uh, uh, allow me to actually connect and authenticate through ssm so once that is uh, allowed and then of course ssm will help with uh, setting up the shs connection to the ec2 and notice this is uh, very much in contrast with if i put my ec2 instance on public subnet then i need a security group that allows uh, inbound port 22 from a uh, certain uh, CIDR, public internet CIDR, for example. But here is totally there's no inbound port 22 need to open in my security group for that private EC2 instance. So could we take a look at the actual setup inside the AWS console? Sure. 
So there are a few services here, as you can see from this arc diagram, VPC, private subnet, the system manager, endpoints, and there's a few more that's not displayed here, like the IM roles and so on and so forth. So we have a, we try to help our uh, customers here. So we have uh, open source uh, our cup formation template to help you set up all these necessary services to replicate the architecture before. So if you go to this link, the mlmax.treatthedocs.io, and you go to click the quick start, it will show you there's a module called development environment. So if you further click this one, this will bring you to the uh, GitHub repository, right, with the, all the cloud formation template here. And you can read the, uh, the documentation, what is set up, and how to uh, actually run this cloud formation template, right? So please do uh, take a look and uh, spend some time to uh, uh, read the documentation. Now, once you have start up, uh, you have deployed sorry, the cloud formation template, this is how it looks like on my uh, AWS account, right? So this is, I call it an ML Max, a regulated environment, right? This is a stack with a number of uh, nested stacks being set up over here. So let's walk through of what are the uh, services that are uh, set up by this uh, cloud formation template. So first of all, obviously a VPC, right? And then under it, we, the, we set up a two private subnet, right? And then what's important is because this is a fully uh, private uh, mode, so we need to set up a number of endpoints to AWS services, right? Because uh, we only allow the EC2 uh, with a private connectivity. It means that it cannot contact the public AWS endpoints. So we need to set up a private AWS endpoint inside this uh, new VPC that we have created, right? So you can see here that we would like, uh, you know, allow uh, S3, code commit, SageMaker, EC2, and a few more, all right? And again, this all being set up by the cloud formation template that we showed you earlier, all right? And then also, I would like to highlight on the security group, again, to emphasize that we only allow our traffic within the uh, VPC, right? Now, especially important is that this line. So we, we need to allow uh, the EC2 instance to talk to the endpoints in this VPC and that's why you see this uh, we, we, we allow port 443 but only within this VPC right and right. after that yeah sure yeah, so what's required actually on that actual EC2 instance in terms of permissions and, and software correct so if I start from the EC2 instance we can see that I've started an EC2 instance now there's a key pair that I've created and assigned to this EC2 instance so I'm, I'm, I'm skipping that part What's important is that you see there's a uh, IAM roles here and the security groups, which we talked about earlier, right? So these IAM roles has been created as a part of the uh, cloud formation template, right? So please take a look and do review what it is, right? And this is what it takes to uh, talk to, for the EC2 to be able to interact with the SSM endpoints, right? Now, uh, the EC2 instance must have SSM agent installed, right? right. So Hope, uh, go to this uh, documentation page and you can see that there's a few army by default have SSM agent installed, right? I'm using deep learning based on Amazon Linux 2 just now, right? So it has SSM agent installed. Now, in case you use a different army not listed here, so uh, please consult the SSM documentation, uh, this one, how to install SSM agent over there, right? And then what's also important is that the credential that your clients or your corporate notebooks going to use, the AWS credential, right? It needs to have uh, enable this permission, right? Call to start a SSS session, right? So again, uh, the link is a uh, display here. Uh, please go to here. So if you, let's say if your AWS credential is actually your IAM role, so it means that your IAM role need to have this policy enabled. And then on the client Wonderful. side, uh, reminder that you need to install the session manager plugin for the AWS CLI, the command lines, on your uh, corporate notebook. Right? Again, this is the documentation. Uh, please uh, follow the instruction to, uh, to install this plugin for your uh, corporate workstation. Mm. And so now could you show us how to connect to an instance um, and how to configure your SSH? Of course. So we need to create a SSH uh, alias, 
So the way to do this uh, depends on the operating system in your uh, client, right? In my case, I know that I need to edit a file in under my home directory uh, and then under .ssh and the file name is called config. So this is a typical uh, stanza in your SSH config, right? You've probably seen this many, many times. So I'll say that I, will, I want to have an alias called is 2 mlmax Now the host name, typically you, you put in the IP address. Right, but here you notice that what we put in is the instance ID, which you can check here, right? It's the uh, instance ID, this one, right? And then of course I put in my user and because uh, my, arm, my army is Linux 2, I know that the user is EC2-user. And of course your, the private key, which you generated when you create your uh, key pair on AWS console. And lastly, this is a new addition. You need to put this proxy command because you are telling your SSH client that instead of a direct SSH connection, you should uh, set up a connectivity through the SSM endpoints, right? Now, what I would uh, recommend is that uh, because uh, especially like for some of us who work with a multiple AWS credentials or in even multiple AWS accounts, so it is useful to set up a uh, AWS profile right and then once i do that i can say that well for this host alias uh you all you we ask the sss client to always use the credential from this AWS profile to authenticate to the ssh right and lastly let's show the terminal here so i will do again so at the beginning of this video we show connecting from the ide now is it's the same, it's basically SSH connection, but this time directly from the terminal. And then you can see that I'm inside this EC2 already. Thank you, thank you. And thank you everyone for joining this episode of ML Max TV. Our plan is to release new videos on a regular basis. So if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to get notified of our next release.